Let's go. A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. What's his name? A Sir Walter Jones. Who show is it? A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. Say it again. A Sir Walter Jones. Who are you with? A Sir Walter Jones. One more again. A Sir Walter Jones. The Sir Walter Jones Show. Co-host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show in where we tackle all the hot topics in a believer's walk. A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. What's his name? A Sir Walter Jones. Who show is this? A Sir Walter Jones. Who is it? A Sir Walter Jones. Say it again. A Sir Walter Jones. Who are you with? A Sir Walter Jones. Hello, everybody. So are the Sir Walter Jones show. I am he. It is Fireside Friday. We sit around the mic and we talk to you about stuff going on. Uh, usually we would talk about something that's going on in the community. We talk about political things that's happening. We talk uh, about just stuff. Myself and the Alvin C. Carter came together. We decided to talk about, um, we call it Fireside Friday because that is a name that uh, the great Franklin Delano Roosevelt came up with. Uh, he was sit by the t- at, by the radio, that is. They really didn't have TVs at the time. Uh, and if they did, it was not uh, a privilege of everybody's. And he just sat at the, around the radio. And President Obama, he still does this today. All presidents do this. They have uh, fireside chats every weekend, and they just he just talk about the the state of the country, state of the union, or what's going on in the in the world or the country today. Today, I want to talk about an issue here. I want to talk about sex. Yep, let's talk about sex. Every time you hear something about sex in church, is always a, a rebuke. Uh, the preacher or the missionary, the old mother sitting there with the white hat. Uh, always, uh, when, they, when it comes to bringing that up, she or he brings up the part about you being in sin because of your sex. Whether, whether it's adultery, whether it's fornication or something like that. Well, today, I'm not going that route. I'm going in a route where you will not hear in church. Uh, and for rightfully so in some cases because the churches are mixed because you've got children in the audience. And so the church need to have classes on what I'm about to talk about today. We're talking about sex education for married couples, the joy of sex. Okay, we're going get to ready, get ready to get really deep, really raw with this. Okay, I'm going to take the filters off. I got Facebook Live chimed in here, and they're going to help me out. I'll be reading whatever they have to say. Uh, but I will say this. Let me give some rules and regulations to this thing here, okay? Some of you who are, are listening right now and some of you who are watching me on YouTube uh, and uh, Facebook uh, Live, um, just know that some of the information I give may be too overly powerful for you. you, you some of you are still kind of virgins out there, um, and, and you reverted back to virginity in a sense in the mind, Okay. I'm going to say some things that may make me feel uh, look like I'm not even saved anymore. I will not be using profanity. I will not be cussing. No, but I'm going to say some things uh, to you because, you know, even though I'm a single man, I was married before and I knew all of the innuendos and ins and outs, no pun intended, on how to please and to be pleased. OK, in marriage. So we're going to bring up some things that some of you probably haven't thought about. Uh, and, um, many of you, uh, uh, kind of deep, you know, I was on Facebook and I was talking about this in a couple of groups and they just got deep on me. I said, you know what? That's the problem. That's probably why you're single today. That's probably why you're married today, but your wife or your husband is not satisfied sexually because y'all are too deep. And because the church is silent on sex, you've got to try to figure out now what to do on your own. You got to try to figure out how to satisfy your mate. Let me, I look at this thing as how we could go outside the church and get everything we need in life, almost everything uh, outside of the spirit realm. Even in the church, they have programs in the church for almost every aspect of your life. But when you come to the church and ask them about anything about sex on how to improve, they're going to send you somewhere else or they're going to use these Uh, spiritual terms they're going to deflect some things um they're going to um change the subject on you they're going or they're going to be so general like um 
uh, Donald Trump by saying, I'm going to fix it. It's going to be huge. Oh, it's going to be great. Y'all going to be so tired of us winning. Just general stuff. He ain't said jack leg nothing. He ain't said nothing about nothing specific. And that's what happens in our churches. They do not give you any specifics on how to please your mate. All right. So the job of me is to talk about the downright dirty stuff. And we're going to go there about some stuff uh, that um, you may think about. Say, you know what? My man would not have went next door and laid with that woman if I had just heard his words. Or sometimes he can't tell you. Maybe felt the vibe in his body. You know, try, try to figure out what was wrong with me that caused him not to want to do this, not want to do that. Okay. But yet when I, when I busted him with this other woman, he was doing the exact, the very things with her that I wanted him to do with me and why he's not doing that. Well, I'm going to bring up some things and tell you, tell you why. Okay. I'm going to go through a, 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 a order here, a pecking order of stuff. Um, Hebrews 13 and four, let's bring this out and let's see if we can make sense of Hebrews. All right. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Okay. That scripture right there has got more folk in trouble. That scripture right there has got just as many people in trouble as the verse where the apostle Paul said, it is better to marry than to burn. You guys read that scripture and y'all ran out there because you could not contain your, your flesh or what have you. Uh, you got hot and horny and bothered and all that stuff. And so what you did was you, he says, well, I might as well get married. Knowing good and well, you was not in love with that woman. You was not in love with that man. How do I know? Been there, done that, wrote the book on it. So you went out there and got married because you could not contain yourself. That scripture got a lot of folk in trouble, just like this one right here. Because you guys have allowed some things in your sexual lives and marriage that uh, I think is forbidden. Now, somebody says, well, it says undefiled. That means any and everything, right? Uh, well, okay, we'll see. Then it says, but hor whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So pretty much it's saying marriage, don't worry about that. Whatever you're doing sexually in your bedroom, God says, I ain't going to touch that. I ain't going to judge it. Although I will bring up some things. Okay. I want to talk about the word seduction because me and a, a friend of mine were talking about the Ruth thing. You guys got to go to my video last week, last Friday, go on my wall last Friday. Uh, well, today's date. Uh, is August the 12th. Okay. Today's August the 12th. So go to August the 5th on my Facebook wall. I put up a video about preachers. Please don't marry. I never got that many people to listen to my show at one time on Facebook live before, because apparently they needed to hear why I said preachers do not, please don't get married. And I said that because of all of these other things that's going on in their lives, they do not need to be messing up. Nobody's else, No one else's life. The woman. Okay. I went there and I went raw. I spoke for two hours. I only wanted to do it for a few minutes. It went two hours because I was looking at some of the Facebook uh, uh, posts and I just had to expound and then it turned into a question and answer. Okay. And I talked about some sexual things that goes on in a man's body and in his mind. All right. You have to go to that show. Well, because of the controversy that sparked out of that particular show, I want to do part two. And this is talking about, specifics on some things that I said in video one. And one of the things was I was talking about Ruth and this thing with Ruth, I said in that video that she, she, she pretty much seduced uh, Boaz. And then I said that uh, y'all all, everybody, every time I see a post about women and relationship, I always hear Boaz name come up and I always hear his name, of course, in this derogatory term about your broke ass and dumb ass and, and, and uh, all these things that you see and people laugh at it. And we, we make, you know, we, we had our fun with the Boaz jokes. Okay. But getting back to the, the seriousness of the story, um, if the average woman today would do what Ruth did to get Boaz, you would be called a seductress. That was my point. So somebody brought up the word sedu seduction is not a good word. Well, it may not be, but it may not be with you, but it may be a good word with me. You see, with men, we look at terms like that and words like that as a, as a bonus, as a plus, as something desirable. We need to be pleasured because men are always, we're like fountains. We, we're always ready. 
mostly. <laughs> we're ready, okay? You, you don't have to dig into us like women do. We're not deep like whales, okay? We, we're ready. So we want to be married to someone who is a seductress with us exclusively, okay? We want that. We desire that. We want that freak in the bed. We want to call our wives the freak in the bed. She's a lady in the street, but she is straight up seducing freak in the bed. All men, not all men, all right. Most men want that. I don't care if he's an apostle, bishop, preacher, evangelist. I don't care what he is. He want his wife to freak him. The reason why we know that is because when she ain't freaking him, he's out there wanting to be freaked by someone else. And a lot of times out of, out of 10 women who try to get him, uh, that one gets in and then she freaks him. All right. She tears him up. Okay. And he wants that at home, but he's not getting it at home. Here's, here's, a, here's a couple of reasons why he's not getting it at home. That how that woman was raised. All right. He didn't know her viewpoints on some sexual things that he desire. And most times men desire more sexually than women. Of course, today, the one you, a lot of women now are very, very, very sexual. As a matter of fact, they have a particular porn that they call soft porn and more women buy that, of course, than men do. And I'm t when I get to my pornography subject, I'll talk about that in a minute. But I've said I, I use the word seductress with Ruth. OK, it's I said that is because how her mother in law told her to go and get Boaz attempt to, to go and get his attention. Okay. When you read the story, when a man reads the story, he sees seductress. When a woman reads the story, she sees something else. Now we all know that God set this thing up where Ruth was a, we believe she was a righteous woman. And so Boaz was righteous as well, but it was something that her mother-in-law said to her that caused us to wonder, Hmm, what is going on? Why is this woman doing this? I have my notes here, uh, Ruth, I think it's chapter three. Uh, and I said, it, it is right for Naomi to desire security for Ruth because they both were without husbands. Okay. And there's that Boaz guys in there, got his field. He's doing okay. All right. Now Ruth is in a very precarious situation because she is a foreigner. She's a widow where, and she's poor. Security is an interesting word in the Hebrew language, okay? Because both Ruth and Naomi, they didn't have anything. Uh, you had to be attached to a husband, especially in that culture there, in order to have some type of security. Some transitions say, shall I not provide a home for you? The term has both ideals in mind, a place of rest, a secure home a place of acceptance and protection. That's what Naomi wanted for herself and for Ruth. Y'all still with me. And because Naomi knows that Ruth is committed to, uh, to, to uh, taking care of her, her mother-in-law, she realizes that Ruth's advantages, her advantages are going to be her advantages too. She's not foolish and she wants a good outcome for the both of them. Naomi is looking out for herself as well as her daughter in walks Boaz. And here's what happens. Okay. Now it seems like there was a manipulation going on through some type of sexual attraction. Let's consider the specifics of Naomi. Everything she said had to do with Ruth's physical attractiveness and the timing of her physical uh, nearness to Boaz. You notice that she did not tell her daughter, go over there and wave at him, bring him up uh, some plate, a plate of food. Okay. Go in there and tell him about how to better off his stocks and bonds. No, everything she talked about had everything to do with physical attraction. Okay. She picks harvest time, which is agriculturally, uh, which is, which, which, in, which in agricultural communities are all over the world is a festive occasion. The party is thrown after the winnowing. Okay. Y'all look that word up. And then the Bible talks about the winnowing fork. When the heaps of grain are on the, sh the threshing floor, that's, that's y'all's garden, by the way. She antici anticipates that Boaz will have something to drink. And the neck, and, and then, then what happens is in this text is, um, 
His heart was merry. He was a little tipsy. And Naomi's counsel, is, here's what she says. She says, wait until his wits are least about him. Look as good as you can. Wash yourself and anoint yourself. That is, put some alluring fragrance on. Okay? Put on your most attractive clothing and snuggle up to his feet at a time when he'll least expect it. I dare any of y'all to come over to my house doing that at one o'clock in the morning. Okay. Then wait and see what happens. Ruth was not directing to say uh, anything. Maybe just wait her, maybe waft her scent in his direction, or maybe hope he was captured in some way uh, by her, her presence. But Naomi's advice is about beguiling the man, being alluring. Naomi doesn't intend for Ruth to seduce him on the threshing floor. And certainly Ruth would never agree to seduce this man. But what the, what she clearly does intend is that the evening will contain enough sexual tension so that Boaz will make a decision based on the power of romantic possibilities. You get that? I dare you try that with a man today. Even in that culture back then, he's, he's tipsy. Now, a little liquor in you, you know what, you're going, what, what happens, okay, to a man, to a man's body when that happens. So now she got all this perfume on, and she's sitting up under this man in the dark of night. Come on. In a man's eye, that's straight seductress. Uh, the problem is that you don't arrive at security and rest, which is what Naomi is setting out to do. By maneuvering people around their better judgment, you don't ultimately create a relationship that is going to have enough depth to be really honest by uh, learning to maximize someone's inability to think clearly. You know, stealthy manipulation isn't the way to build security in a relationship. It doesn't work in any setting. So this is one of the reasons uh, politicians are so vilified. Because at election time, they make promises. But once they're voted in office, they renege. The voter was tricked into believing an illusion and there is eventually a negative backlash, which is going to happen in this, this next election coming up. OK, I see y'all Facebook Live. I'm going to read what you're saying in a minute. So at the at the critical moment when Boaz awakened, Ruth didn't rub his feet. She didn't nibble on his ear. OK, this is the part where I, I agree with the seduction that she was not a seducer in the terms of what women's think that men think okay she, uh, she or she didn't give him any other nonverbal signals that would make her presence more suggestive with a fearful cracking voice she spoke to Boaz about a responsibility based on a teaching of scripture you should marry me you're a near kinsman pretty much is what she says the figure uh, said spread your covering over your maid is a statement about marriage. That's what it is. It does not describe the blanket under which they were lying. In other words, it means put your cover over me as a husband. Even today, Jews in many different settings get married under a canopy, which is the same notion that it is translated, just cover me. In Ezekiel 16, when God draws near to Israel, his fallen young bride and initiates a marriage relationship with her, the same language is used. Cover me. Okay? So, I'm, I'm going to read what you guys are saying here, because uh, y'all might be on to something. Uh, Kimberly says, what if he was not doing the thing that made you not want to seduce him? What, was, what if he was not doing the things? He was not... Let me read that again. What if he was not doing this, the things? Oh, that made you... Well, this is a case-by-case -case basis, because... I, I think I may answer that question in the in my lesson today. Uh, Lady Michelle says the older women is supposed to be teaching the young women. That's come on, that's in Titus. Uh, Lionel Brown, hey, so okay, so okay to go beyond the scope of missionary way of the bedroom. Uh, I don't know if that was a question. She lay at his feet until morning. She sure did. She was with him all night, Beatrice. The flesh of spirit, the flesh of spiritual is of unnatural or unmarried flesh. 
Okay, I'm not sure what you're asking, Brown, but I'm gonna hopefully in my lesson uh, I'll bring that up. I'll I'll see if I can answer your question. Now, I, that's Ruth and Boaz situation. But what about the whole problem with Solomon and his to be bride? Because if you look in Scripture, you'll notice some things happening here. Because I think we overly spiritualize the Song of Solomon, over spiritualize it. We understand it's been canonized for a reason. And a lot of scriptures have dual. They have a natural uh, uh, interpretation and the spiritual interpretation as well. Okay. But my problem here is, and I've said this on the show before, why y'all not talking about sex before marriage? Okay. This is a hard question to you deep saints. Why aren't you talking about sex before you get married? I didn't say, why aren't y'all doing it? We've all been guilty of that. Okay, but why aren't y'all talking about sex before you get married? I think that's a problem because y'all talk about any and everything. You get counseling on financial situations, on on even some of the maybe some of the the natural stuff on maybe medication. There's an element there. You you try to get counsel, gosh, on uh, your children, or maybe you you talk about maybe having children later on, but you don't talk about sex. You don't. And then you guys get married and you realize y'all are not compatible sexually because y'all didn't talk about it. Now, some of you may be not be able to handle the subject, the situation. Okay, well, then you need to go into prayer. All right. Talk about some things. But do you not realize how important sex is to the average man is absolutely vital. And I can't tell you how many times marriages broke up within six months because y'all didn't talk about sex. You just didn't talk about it. So you're like, well, brother, Jones, what, what about sex do we want to talk about? That's the question. What about it? Did you want to talk about it? Why can't you ask him or her any question if y'all engage? I'm talking about if y'all serious and you're in an engagement and y'all ready. Y'all say, okay, this is it. Talk about it. Okay? Talk about some things you will not do. Tell, hey, I will not take it there. Won't do it. I'm letting you know. Now, if me, if you putting it there... It's something that is important to you in your marriage, in our marriage. So let me tell you right now, this marriage may not work because putting it there for you may not work in the marriage. And we may, we may, have, to, uh, we may have to rethink this thing. I'm, I'm trying to tell you these are some things that y'all need to consider. You better talk about it. Um, uh, Demetri says uh, they don't talk about it because they don't want to reveal their inner freak. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mother Keita says true. However, the older women can't teach the younger women if they too are full of lust and tri trickery. <laughs> I hit the, uh, the like button there. Uh, sometimes the conversation runs deep and it cannot be handled. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go there. But Sheldon Thomas says it's, it's taboo. Yeah, it's taboo. Uh, they may think it's being asked of them at the, yep, you, you on it, you're on it. Brown, what are you saying? Uh, that's what asked the, that the flesh of unmarried people, that what I'm feeling, I don't think or want it because I know my flesh too strong to deal with. Yeah, that's, see, I, I love the honesty, Brown. Sex, let's talk about sex before marriage, okay? Uh, an overview of the contents of the Song of Solomon reveals many important aspects of romantic love. Straight romantic. Stop getting too deep and, and spiritual on, on Song of Solomon. Trust me, when you read it, you won't even feel nothing spiritual when you read Song of Solomon. You just look at the language. We understand that there is a, a relationship between Christ and the church. We get that. But we usually get that at the end after we didn't calm down. Come on. I know I'm talking to some of y'all out there. For example, there is a proper time and place for romantic love to begin and grow. That's in uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 2 and 7. It's really a great story here. He says, I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love till he please. Mm -hmm. That's what she's saying here. She said, this tells us they're not married yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. But apparently there is a stirring up going on. They are romantically, uh, at least inner. They love each other so much, not just mentally, but, but physically. Trust me, I can guarantee you when they look at each other, all kind of uh, moisture happens in their bodies. But they said, no, uh, let's wait. Then romantic love involves a longing between a man and a woman. 
I'm bringing this up because about because I, my comment about you should be talking about sex. You should be talking about this part, the romance part, before you get married. I, I'm tr- really trying to save some marriages because I can't tell you how many of my friends said we should have talked about it, Walter. And because we didn't talk about this, what I'm trying to do with my wife now, she don't like. She don't like this. She don't like that. She can't take that. It's painful for that. I said, I know. I know the church ain't talking to y'all about that. They're just sending y'all home. Uh, or what's going to happen is you're going to learn about it in the world and you're going to learn about it through pornography, mm-hmm. which is the worst thing. And then, and, and then it says uh, mutual admiration happens. Okay. In chapter one, then, and a desire to be together happens in chapter three. Also romantic love includes sexual expression. And the appropriate context for sexual intimacy is within marriage. That's when you get to chapter three, verse six. Okay. All right. Uh, Then it says after the wedding couples face many different situations and it is important for them to keep the romantic love alive. Couples will face occasional indifference to each other or time apart for each other. Okay. That's in chapter five followed by a renewed display of love, a rekindling of the romance, chapter 5, verse 9 through 16. Okay, this is in your Bible. Also important is communication within the marriage. Chapter 7 focuses on improvement in this area, followed by an increase of intimacy in chapter 8. All this is in the Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon is giving you a whole aspect of what was going on between these two people in marriage. And a lot of it, most of it had everything <laughs> to do with romance and physical and sex. Y'all don't talk about this stuff, but yet you got the Bible in your house and there's no sermons preached on Song of Solomon. You just ever, ever. It's bad enough you're, bad, you, you, you're afraid of the, to preach out of the book of Revelation, but you, you really don't want to preach out of uh, Song of Solomon because, you do, because it ain't happening at home with you and your boo. So you can't preach out of this, okay? And then you don't want to stir up some of the the, the moisturizers in the, in the room. So you just you just leave it alone. I think the really big reason is you just don't know what to do with Song of Solomon. You don't know what to do with it. Now, this right here is a it's a it's it's the Bible of of romance and marriage right there. We see some of the scriptures uh, throughout the, the the Apostle Paul talked about marriage, and uh, in First uh, Corinthians chapter seven, we get a lot of that. But there's not much specifics. Just not. It just tells you, okay, at, at, when the, if the wife or the husband decides they want to fast, okay, let y'all go ahead and, you know, separate for time. Not separate in, in, your, in the house, but separate, meaning no sex, for time. But then come back as soon as you can because you're going to be tempted. Okay, Th- that was a wonderful specific there. Okay, but it doesn't give us a specific on what we can do in bed. We had to find out in the, uh, the book of Hebrews on the word undefiled. Well, what is that? Okay, we just need to find out what 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 exactly is undefiled, and I'm I'm hoping to answer that. The, the uh, let's see, Beatrice says that some of the older women also cannot teach because their sexual lives are, or relationships have been unsuccessful. That's true. Uh, the blind <laughs> would be leading the blind. That 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 is that is very true. Marty says the majority of younger women today don't want to receive uh, what the older women try to teach. That's right. And they're going to get it in the streets. All right. So now they got somebody, Elder Jones, I'm going to help them out here. Okay. But this is about marriage. All right. So when they want to enter into that marriage thing, uh, I'm going to go there and I'm going to go raw. All right. Okay. Now that's what's going on. Now I do want to bring up the word seduction because I want to finish this thing with the roof thing. Here's what the, here's what the, definition of seduction is it says seduction is a process or of a process of deliberately deliberately enticing a person to lead astray or form or from duty uh rectitude or the like okay these are these are words the, to corrupt to persuade or induce to engage in sexual behavior if I was Boaz, that's the way I would have been seeing Ruth right there. Cause the end result would have been, she wants sex with me and she wanted tonight. That's the way a man would look at that thing. Okay. Now I don't know if you mothers have give, are giving the young ladies 
the the rule for a, ch- a, a chapter from Ruth and Naomi. If you are, then you should be telling a young lady to come to my house at one in the morning and come sit up under <laughs> up under my skirt and sleep with me all night. Say no, no, you don't. Don't notice Naomi didn't say don't don't have sex with him. She never said that in the in the words, although it is assumed that that's what she means. She just didn't say that. She kind of left her out there. Cause they didn't, both of them didn't really know the full extent of what uh, Boaz was going to say or do. Naomi did say, "Here's what he probably will say," and he did say that, but that was just that portion. He, there's a, some lot of stuff he could have said or did because he had liquor in him. Okay, the word seduction stems from Latin and means literally to lead astray. As a result, the term may have a positive or negative connotation. You get that? Positive or negative. That means positive for men, negative for women. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all. Uh, famous seducers from history or legend include Lilith. That story right there always freaks me out. Y'all go ahead and Google the story about Lilith. That's Adam and Eve. Before there was Adam and Eve, there was Adam and Lilith. Now, that's not really true. It's just it's it's Jewish uh, folklore, pretty much what it is. Uh, Giacomo Casanova. Oh, Casanova. That's where y'all get that word from. Uh, and the fictitious character of Don Juan. Seduction as a phenomenon is not the subject of scientific interest, although similar. More specific terms like short-term mating, casual sex, or mating strategies are used in evolutionary psychology. I mean, they really studied what seduction is. Seduction seen negatively involves temptation and enticement. Often sexual in nature to lead someone astray into a behavior choice they would not have made if they were not in a state of sexual arousement. You get that? That's what happened. Seen positively, though, seduction is a a synonym for um, is a synonym for the act of charming someone, male or female. You see, seduction can start with just a charm. It's still seduction. But you can charm me for days, weeks, and months. Never land with me, but you can seduce me all the way to to the point where you can get me into the marriage vow. Okay? That's seduction as well. And that's that's what we now men look at the Ruth and Boaz story as. She seduced him, not to get him in bed at the moment, but she seduced him in a way to get him his mind aroused and to get him to hurry up and make a decision because time was winding up and there was already a near kinsman in line before Boaz to uh, have Ruth. Y'all go to the story. You'll get it uh, when you read it again slowly this time, please ladies. Uh, Michelle King says, if I can get to it because y'all chiming in here, uh, if I can be transparent, well, duh, that's what, that's what's going on here. I was a virgin when my then boyfriend and now husband had sex. I was so inexperienced in some things, but was a willing worker when it came to learn more and just laying on my back. People need to open themselves up to new experience with their husbands. Boom. I hit the like button right there. I'm going there, Michelle. You and your subtle and (laughs) invitations to the single women. I know. I know. It's subtle. Kimberly says, I realize uh, the way I'm set up uh, when you are doing manly things and respectful of me, that makes me open up and want to be a freak. I am. (laughs) Okay. She going there, y'all. Y'all read that. I got to, I got to continue. Um, okay. So that's what seduction is. All right. But let's, uh, let's, let's get to a point where maybe some of the mothers might walk away. Okay. I I need to, I need to go here. Okay. Uh, Let's Let's go to the bullet point that I put on Facebook and let's see if I can go from top to bottom. How about that? All right. I, number one, I did say, did Ruth seduce Boaz? We answered that question. Okay. Number two, why is the song of Solomon in the Bible? We answered that question because God is in God. Uh, he, he, he put, he gave us the Institute of marriage and marriage is important. And we're supposed to give due benevolence to each other. That's sex. Okay. So when we're making love to our wives, husbands, uh, that's ministry. That is one of the highest forms of worship is when you're making love to your wife. Yes, it is. Matter of fact, if you want to just say hallelujah, praise, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Why are you inside of her? Why not? That's worship. God approves it. 
If you disagree, then why are you doing it? Okay? You're in marriage. It's legal. <laughs> he approved it. Go ahead and worship him. Lift your hands and say, hi, yeah, worship him. And then take your hands and do something else with her body. It's legal. Okay? Uh, number three, the importance. Okay, I'm going to go to the importance of kissing. Okay? All right? This is important. Being respectful only for my husband, though. Yeah, that's good. Okay, kissing. What I have discovered is that y'all don't kiss no more, husbands and wives. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. And I think it is something, uh, and I can't speak exclusively for everybody, but because there's some people who are not into kissing. You never was. Your desire is somewhere else. It's like that book called, the uh, what is it called, The Five Love Language? Okay, why don't we bring that up so that we can... Love languages, okay? Let's bring that up so that we can figure out some things here, okay? I think of who is that, Garrett Chapman? Yeah, that's him, okay? I would like to find out what's what's going on in that area of uh, the non-wanting to kiss because I'm seeing that quite a bit uh, with, with couples or well, the lack thereof, okay? All right, I'm, I'm looking for, uh, okay, here it is. The five ways to express and experience love that Chapman calls love languages, gifts, okay? Those who want gifts, uh, quality, time, words of affirmation, acts of love, and physical touch. There are people who come together in marriage, one desire to, to be physically touched or to touch physically, that is, is more than the other. For instance, I may be a very physical man, but my wife may not be that physical. Yes, she likes to be touched, but not all the time and not in certain areas. So that could be a problem in my marriage. A lot of times you see that during dating because we do touch during dating. Y'all don't be lying to me now. Y'all, we kiss and we touch during dating. Okay. Uh, but then there's some other, so there's some other things that happen in marriage and you don't find that out until marriage do happen. Uh, then you realize she's not really into the physical like I thought she was because She's kind of seduced me and leading me on with her words, but her action indeed does not line up to it. So ladies, you got to be careful what you tell a man about all these fancy things you can do to him. Then y'all enter into a marriage. Now he's like, he's waiting for you to exemplify everything you said. And it doesn't happen. Now he's like, you, you got to be kidding me because the woman up the street was doing all that stuff for me. And I left her because I was in love with you and I didn't want her in between. Now I'm in this marriage. This, this can be a problem. So let's go back to the kissing. The kissing is absolutely vital because what it does is it, it stirs up some things physiologically, of course. It makes y'all moist. But what it does is, okay, since I'm on this subject, uh, let me say something to y'all, okay, about the kissing. Uh, and I'm going to go a little further. I'm going I'm to I'm go down my note and then come back up because I need you to hear this part. Um, and Barbie says she don't believe in touching before marriage. That's, that's you, Barbie. I don't have a problem with people kissing before marriage. If you can handle it, if you both have an understanding that that's all that's going to happen, nope, I don't have a problem with it. And um, you're just going to have to take that up uh, with your with your creator. <laughs> okay. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with your creator. Uh, kissing is, is uh, uh, like Lady Rochelle says, it's, it's healthy as well. It is physically healthy. Um, now, just because something is healthy don't mean y'all everybody got to be doing everything, okay, because it's healthy. All right, all right, okay. Because somebody said smoking weed is healthy. Well, <laughs> it also kills some of y'all's brain cells. All right. So I was with, I was with a couple women, okay? And, and, and again, I'm being transparent here. Y'all tell me, young ladies, if, if I'm wrong. Okay, I, I'm not wrong because I can't say, how, am I, how, how should I say this? I have to learn not to say all women are this, all women are that. I have, I and my brothers have to stop, stop saying that because that does not represent all of you. Okay, we 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 go, we find ourselves saying these things because we have ex experience with several women, and so what we've done is we take these women and we've made a uh, came to a, an executive decision that possibly all women are like that. This is not true, for the same reason why women should stop saying that all men are this, all men are dogs, because you sh because then it looks, makes you look like a hoe. Okay, so stop saying all men are this because that means you don't slept with all men. So you shouldn't be say that as well because they're all men are dogs and it must be the kibbles and bits that you're giving them. So, um, but here, here I was with a young lady 
And um, I wanted to kiss her. Now, this was many years ago. And I wanted to kiss her, and she refused to kiss me on the lips. Wouldn't do it. But she, he- but she was willing to heavy pet with me, okay? And, uh, and then she uh, allowed me to have sex with her. Okay? All right? On and on. But during sex, she would not let me kiss her. Wouldn't do it. And I was baffled about it. So I thought something was wrong with me. Was it my breath? Okay. Well, was, was it the way my tongue was aligned? Was it my teeth? What, what was it was about me that she did not want to kiss me? Uh, but then, she, you know what she said to me? She said, but I'll go down on you. And I was like, you're kidding me. You mean tell me, is my lips that bad that she will go down on me? On my genitalia? But you won't kiss me on the lips? That is the most baffling thing I had ever heard. Okay, I think I might have been in my uh, early 30s. And then she told me, she says, because if I kiss you, then that is that uh, my connection to my, my lip to your lip is, is your connection to my heart. And I said, that's, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. Stop, stop trying. It must be something on my lips. She said, no, Walter, you got to believe me. If I kiss you, that is a way to my heart. See, I can, she says, I can make love to you. You can penetrate me and I can, I can suck on your penis, but I will not kiss you. And I thought to myself, wow, this woman is crazy. Okay. Fast forward a couple years later, that thing happened again with another woman. She, she refused to kiss me, but she says, but I will suck you. And I says, this must be a woman thing. What is this? But then I began to think, I began to study and think, Oh, I get it now. Women operate through their hearts, through emotion. Men, we see a fine, sexy woman walk across the street, and we like turning the heads. We're like, man, well, ooh, I can just get her in bed, and on and on. And it's the same, it's the same thing with, with soft porn. When I get to that, I'll, I'll tell you why I said it's the same thing with soft porn and hard porn. But she would, they refused to kiss me because they felt like if I kiss you, I'm going to fall in love with you, and I really don't, I'm afraid to do that. And I realized that's something I had never knew. I didn't understand that. So the kissing in the marriage, though I'm seeing, is not happening. And some of the wives will call me and say, my husband don't kiss me. Mm-mm, he don't touch me. He'll, he'll penetrate me, but he won't kiss me. My, she, said, she might say, the only time he will, he will kiss me maybe is during penetration. But that's the only time. But throughout the day, won't touch me. Okay, that's a problem because if a man has pulled away the the kissing, that means he's pulling away here in his heart. If that's if his love language don't line up, meaning if he's really not was a kisser anyway, because there's some men that just they're just not kissers. That don't mean they don't love you. But then there are men who were kissers. You married them because they were the most fantastic kisser in the world. And then before you knew it, he stopped kissing you. He just stopped. Okay, and then. There is the aspect of looking your mate in the eye when you kiss. Because I keep bringing up the porn part because there's so much in that. We did an entire show on pornography on the Sp- our Spreaker account. You just have to go there. We did two hours on pornography that would, if you got false teeth in your mouth, it's going to fall out. Uh, but it says that during, if when a man is watching porn, you know what the most prominent part on the woman's body is it's not her eye it's not her i I gave it away right there it's it's not her breast it's not her vagina and it's not her behind it is her eyes he's looking at her eyes and when a man kisses you and he is looking in your eyes because i know sometimes when we kiss we close our eyes that's because we we embellished we're involved in the moment that's good. But when a man opens his eyes and he's my, sometimes, you, you know, you guys are, you'd be kissing your eyes are closed. And then, and then when you open your eyes, you see him looking at you <laughs> like, Oh, you get started. Why? How long have you been looking at me? He is looking at your face because there's something in eight. There's something in us that God has placed in us. I don't know what it is and why is that, but we have to, we look in your eyes because I think that eye is the affirmation that we need. And also, it is the, they say that the eyes are the windows to the soul. 
there's so much that we can see in the eyes. Have everybody ever walked to people and they look in your eyes and they say, Mm-mm, no, baby, no, there's something going on because I can see it in your eyes. In your eyes. That, who was that? People Bryson? I don't know who that was. Okay. Um, oh, my God, I came in on the wrong point. I'll be back. <laughs> I've gotten off the sucking part. I was not going to be a lot of the sucking part on here. So you may have to be gone for a long time. Uh, I miss somebody. In, in today's world, we have to touch to see what the real and what's the fake Joe here. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because my mom was on here. So I'm not going, I'm not going to say it. She was a whore. Whores will do everything else, but kiss. Okay. That's what Terry Sanders says. Okay. All right. Um, what else did you say, Terry? What's the spirit of whoredom? Uh, oh, that's the spirit of whoredom, not in general, but in principle, no offense. <laughs> that's true. Now, thank you for covering that up. Uh, Terry Sanders, Bless you. That that is so true. That exactly what it is. Uh, Tia says, "Oh, oh, yeah, I know this conversation is raw. I know that that is that." Terry Sanders is right because you got to figure out what was in her when you met her that wanted her to do all those things in her, but she couldn't kiss you because it was easy for her. The spirit of whoredom. That's right. It's easy for her to do all those those things physically with you. I mean, you could be swinging from the ceiling, but she won't kiss you because then kissing you took her to a divine place, took her to almost a place of righteousness that she was afraid to go to enter into because then the kissing you will bring her to a place of possible exclusivity with you. And now there's, I don't want to fall in love because I enjoy my life of doing all of this stuff with other people. Okay. These are some of the things you got to think about. So couples, y'all got to start getting back to kissing with each other and build that bond. Again, the Bible mentioned kiss, you know, the people kiss for greetings. Okay. People kiss, gave a kiss of death. Okay. <laughs> okay. So kissing, there must be something about it. It was a culture of that time, but kissing I think is very important and we don't do it anymore. And there are, there is an art of kissing and I think we need to get back to it. Okay. Yes. Sierra, you walk away. You're too, you're too young for this show. Okay. All right. And let's talk about sexual positions since we own sex. Why don't we talk about sexual positions? Because, uh, slam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Brothers ain't working for the wife. It just ain't working. She's looking on TV. She's seeing, uh, these basketball wives. She's seeing Olivia Pope getting broke off by some white president. Okay. She's seeing her as the world turns days of our lives, general hospital. She's seeing these people in bed that these people are in hotel room and they just getting uh, a breaking off pit, bit, bits and pieces of that Kit Kat bar. And then she, the woman, you come home and your wife is like, why can't it be like that in my house? Okay. And so she, uh, you, you, you gotta really stop thinking outside the box and try to figure out why my house ain't, ain't happy. Oh, there's some reasons why let's talk about some positions. Missionary position is a position that seems to be the most uh, position that's used in some religions because they feel that other positions are really against God. Uh, I think it's uh, many of the black Israelites, okay? Um, they don't believe in nothing else but that because it, they don't believe in the woman should be on top. They believe that the man should always be on top because that is a, that is a role of submission when she's on the bottom. It is a role of dominance when he's on the top. And if she is riding him, okay, then, then, then that makes him submissive and that's against their belief and their religion. Yes. Uh, that's not just with the Muslims, um, the black Israelites. Okay. There, there are those over here in the African world, African world. Matter of fact, there was an African who made a video on it on YouTube. Some of y'all saw it put it on Facebook and he said that he was in a dream and, and God told him, woman, you can, you do not ride the man that is against God and you will go to hell for riding the man. All of this wild and weird and crazy stuff, which is nowhere in scripture. Okay. So the missionary position and what it does is it gives him access to your body because he's on top. He's looking at the, uh, the surface. He, it gives him access to your breast and you may not have breast. Okay. That doesn't mean he's not pleased with your body because there's some men who married you and you didn't have breasts. So really, what well, was it really the breast? Okay. Some men, are attracted to large breasts. Some men are attracted to small breasts. Some men don't need breasts at all. They're not breast men and that's okay. But he has access to your eyes when he's on top. He can see your expression on your face 
whenever he's doing with you, he needs to be affirmed. So what your facial expression says to him is, I'm okay. I am still the king of my castle. And it's the, it's what you say audibly. See, because there are men who are just doing his business, as they say on the color purple, he did, he doing his business and you're not making any noise. You know what? That's a turnoff to a lot of men. Ain't no moaning going on. Nope. It's a turnoff. Now, some men, I will say, they don't care for all that noise. They don't want a screamer because they don't want to, to, to let the neighbors know that y'all having sex. They don't want the kids to know what's going on, so they don't want no moan, no screamer, okay? But they want a moaner. Most of them do. They want you to make some audible noise let them know, I think I'm okay, okay? Mm-hmm. How to keep the home fire burning. Yes, sir, Elder Kevin McGee. Terry Sanders says, if your spouse does not kiss you any longer, they're... There's an in, uh, internal problem in your relationship. Thank you, sir. Man, you preach, you teaching this. Please stay here, Doc, because I'm going to read everything you have to say. This just says uh, people have to get out, out of that movie Hollywood sex, uh, though. That's not real. People don't look like that during sex. They sure don't. Perfect hair, perfect makeup, <laughs> strings. <laughs> that is so true. Michelle says, uh, I bet if they get rogue, they'll change their thought process. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's continue with that. <coughs> so that's the missionary position <coughs> position that gives him a place of dominance. Okay. But it can be kind of boring for men who's really involved. It can get boring. And so there's some things that I want to tell you about in just a minute here. Let me see what Barbie had to say. Uh, that gets to be a boring real quick. Where's the excitement in that man on top? Yep. I'm getting ready to go there, Barbie. I read your mind. I'm going to have to sip my tea for this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, before I get to the other positions, I want to say this to you ladies. Ladies, um, do you always have to get your hair done? I mean, all the time? Like like every day? I mean, not every day. I don't get, hair, get your hair done every day. But I mean, do your hair always have to be tight every day? Right, and I'm going somewhere with this because I want to read what Terry says. A, a a great book to read for married couples, uh, intended for pleasure. Doctor Ed Wheat, for my Springer people who can't see Facebook, that's good. Intended for pleasure by Doctor Ed Wheat. Thank you, Terry Sanders. Um, ladies, men like to take their hands and have total control of your body. They do not want to be inhibited in no way, form, or fashion. They want to be able to take their hands and put them everywhere on your body. Because if you're married, your body belongs to him because his body belongs to you. Now, if he's, if he's a face toucher, okay, if he's kissing you, he likes to touch your face. Some men do. Not all. And he, he could do some weird things with his hands. He may put it over your eye while he's kissing you, okay? All right? Because if his penis is doing something, all right, his penis is occupied doing something, his hands usually, because, you know, the hand bone is connected to the penis bone, I guess. I don't know. All right? So he wants to take your head and do something with it. He wants to rub his hands through your hair. If your hair is always tight, if, if you got a new weave in there every night, I mean, sometimes he just wants you to what natural. Sometimes he just wants your hair to be just jacked up because he's going to wind up jacking it up anyway. So what y'all do is you're making love to your husband in bed and you got your head propped up and you tell him he getting ready to reach for you. He's like, oh, don't do that. Now nah, you done, you done, you done. You, the man was getting ready to have a, a moment of, and then you, you know, because your head to him is just as important as, as your lips because every portion of your body is very important to him, but he wants to rub his hands through your head. And sometimes some men want to massage your head, but if your hair is more important than this man, that's going to be a problem. So he feels that you're putting your hair before him and that can be a problem in your marriage. I know y'all saying, really? Is it that serious? Yeah, it's that serious. Jack up your hair sometimes. Let him do it. Okay, let him jack it up. Switch that position around. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Spoil spoil the mood. (laughs) Thank you, Taylor. Spoil the mood. So please, do something with your hair, meaning uh, if you got to put it in some type of bonnet or something like that, 
that's fine. But let me tell you, some men don't like even that, that your hair is always covered with something. That's just stuff in the way. If you're putting on something sexy, usually he can only take that for so long and he wants that stuff come off. That means he wants that stuff off your head too, because he wants every part of you. He wants the part that God made when you were born. That's the part he wants. Okay. So do something with that. That's number two. Uh, number, number three. Okay. If you're going to go to bed, it's important of what you wear and what you do not wear ladies. Okay. If you always got clothes on, he, you know, what it does is he's laying there. And if a man take his clothes off, but you always have your clothes on, he's really, he's really like telling you something like, you know, why is it that you always clothes? He may not always tell you, but he going to show you because he may be poking you throughout the night. It's two in the morning and you feel something in your back, but you see both of his hands. Okay. That, that means he's trying to tell you something. Um, but putting pajamas on every night, that's, I can see if it's cold in the house. You may have to do that. All right. But at least stop wearing your, your grandmama's pajamas. Okay. Can you, I know Victoria got more secrets than just lingerie. I know she got some pajamas there that she can hand out that, that, that she can go and get where it's sexy to him. Matter of fact, most women, men find attractive when she wears his pajamas. When you put his pajamas on, now that's a turn on to him. Okay. Pajamas put on the gown, make sure it's see-through lace, or silk, okay. Or satin, or whatever the, the sexy and the colors are very important because it's psychological to men. If there's a color that just don't do nothing for him, change the color. I mean, I mean, you really want a happy marriage. You want your sex life to be happy or restored. You know, there's some little things that you can do. I, I, I told y'all about the Archie bunkers. What is it? All in the family. Uh, one time I was watching it in the seventies where the meathead. Okay. Mr. Stivic and Gloria, had a fight because she came home with a black wig. Okay. She said, honey, look, look. And she put the black wig on her head and he went crazy. He was like, Oh my God, you look so beautiful. And he kept kissing her and he kept, you know, trying to touch her. And, you know, and she was like, okay, okay, that's enough. And she, she took the wig off and you know what he did? He said, can you put the wig back on? And then she, she said, oh, come on, stop playing. So they went, they went and got into bed and she took the wig off and put a nightgown on. And then she got into bed and he says, what you doing? She says, I'm, we're getting ready to make love. He says, can, can you go and find the wig and put it back on? Y'all know what I'm getting. And you know what the writers were really trying to say? Because what she, what she, her response was, this is your way of cheating on your wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With your wife. He needed something different in the bed. He just needed something and when the when the, you if, uh, y'all have intuition most women y'all have it why y'all always use intuition for something negative why you always use intuition this women's intuition to entrap someone to look into his phone to find some phone number that's, that's strange okay why can't you use intuition in the bed with him try to figure out what's going on with my mate what is it i can do to make his him love me better or him to be more attractive because sex is not going to make him love you better. But what is it I can do to make me more attractive physically to him? Okay. So go buy a wig. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, and a, buy, buy a wig. So that way you could take that off. Cause y'all start doing these sew ins. Well, then that's a problem. Now he got, now he got to go get some needle and thread and scissors and try to, uh, and the, the Demetrius says, um, put on something that enhances your body structure. Everything is not for everyone. Oh my God. I'm, I'm going there. I, I'm going to go there in a minute. The, the, uh, who said that Demetrius said that I'm afraid when Demetrius chime in, I'll be afraid. Uh, Kendrick said, clean the house. Yeah. Barbie said she saw the episode. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Kendrick said, clean the house. Thank you, sir. A dirty house. When a man comes home to a dirty house, uh, that is the one of the most unattractive things because there's a scent in there. Well, I'll go here in my notes. Sonia says, my husband doesn't like my freedom rag. Ah, thank you for saying that. AKA bonnet. I don't mind sacrificing my press pr pressing curls for him. I love that. I love it. Uh, Carl says, when I get married, I'm not wearing anything to bed and I'm already natural. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. 
Go ahead. Go ahead, Carla. I love that. I mean, I love the transparency here uh, because um, th- there are some women who go to bed nude. All right. They enjoy it because it makes them feel sexy. Okay. Especially uh, with, with their men. But where, uh, so the, the lingerie, the gowns, the pajamas, sometimes you can wear some stuff. Sometimes it's best not to go to bed with anything on. You got enough body heat there. Get you a blanket. Get you one of those blankets that's really, really warm. Um, what's what's the blanket? What they call it? Fleece. If it's wintertime and it's cold in the house, because you got to turn it down because you want to save on the heating bill, get you some fleece. Get you a blanket on top of that. Your body and his body, that's enough heat. You don't need to put no clothes on. Y'all got enough heat. And then if it's still cold, then y'all need to make some heat. You know what I'm saying? And then if it's still cold, then something's wrong with you. You need to go get checked out. Okay, you got a spirit of uh, coldness. <laughs> the church of the chosen frozen. That's what you are. Uh, there are more women in this conversation. I'm, I'm flipping and going back and forth. Treva. Uh, I ain't done with it. I ain't done with it. Stay out my notes. Uh, yeah. So uh, Kevin McGee says, uh, poetry lights off soft music and it's own. That's it. You y'all set the atmosphere in church. Don't you? Praise and worship gets up there and says, let's set the atmosphere. But then you go at home and you turn the TV on. This man is horny. You turn the TV on. You, you're looking on your phone. You're reading a book. Why can't you set the atmosphere in your bedroom? Because that's, uh, that's where the holy of holies is too. Trust me. He dwells in the bedroom as well. It's undefiled, remember? Okay? So, and I'm going to get to the flip side of what things that are unattractive to women, men. I'm going there. So, be, be, stay tuned. Thank you, Mr. Walters. Uh.